Alright, what's up guys, Sam here. Um, first off, excuse my voice if it sounds a little bit odd. I got a cold and I'm still kind of like getting through it, so please bear with me. Um, but yeah, let's get right into the video. So today we're going to be going through seven things that, in my opinion, every athlete should own. So uh, yeah, let's hop straight into it. Starting up number one, we have a foam roller. I mean, I don't know how many times I've said it, foam rollers for me are just incredible. Um, your hamstrings anywhere on your back, like it's really going to loosen you up, help you feel more relaxed, and they're so cheap as well. There's so many variations, so if you don't enjoy the first one, maybe ask if your friend's got one at your gym, they'll probably have some. Give a few different try, um, and then see which one works for you, and then just get one. Honestly, they're so cheap. Run in, they're great for, especially for boxing as well. If your back gets tight, like mine does, like obviously when you throw your punches, you pull on the back, and you're quite stiff a lot of the time. If you find that, it's definitely an issue for me. Get a foam roller, give it a try before and after your sessions. Honestly, it's amazing. Best investment I think you can make for that sort of price range. You can get them for like up to 20 uh, up to 20 pounds, and that's honestly all you need to spend. I wouldn't worry about getting a super expensive one if you're just starting out, like any foam roller, perfect, go for it. Number two is a reusable uh, reusable bottle. So obviously doing lots of sports, running, boxing, I drink a ton. I'd hate to figure out how much I actually drank. And a lot of the time before, I was always drinking out of plastic bottles. And it's actually so bad for the environment, because if you look up like where our plastic actually goes, a lot of it doesn't actually get recycled. So A, for the environment, get a reu reusable bottle. But also, it's going to help you stop buying fizzy drinks. And I find that if I've always got a drink on me, like I'm not going to go in the shop and think, oh, I'll just get like a Pepsi Max really quick, or get in, like a really high sugary like sports drink or anything. You can take your own BCAs, which are probably better for you anyway, or you can get like a little bit of squash, which sugar-free squash, it's not going to kill you like some sports drinks might. Um, so yeah, number two, get a reusable bottle, help the environment out and help your body out too. Number three is proper footwear. Like, I don't know how many times I've walked into a boxing gym and seen guys boxing in like Astro trainers with like zero ankle support. Like, it honestly makes me cringe because I know I used to be that guy when I was younger. Like, I didn't really get boxing boots. So I was like, they're ugly, why would I want to come and train in them? Like, I really didn't get it. But now, owning a pair and having, uh, having hurt my ankles, like, multiple times, I know, like, when you're doing sports, you need to buy the right footwear. Like, it's such a massive key. It's also going to help you for, like, injuries and things. Honestly, the amount of people that take time off of training because of injuries, and also your form, if you get used to training in footwear that isn't actually suitable for your sport, when you come to actually doing an event or something, or when you finally get the proper footwear, which is made to support you in the right ways, you're gonna feel uncomfortable. Your style, your form on everything is gonna be slightly off because you're you're gonna make different adjustments to cater for the fact that your shoes might actually be the weakest point in everything that you do. So for boxing, if you're wearing like shoes without any ankle support, if you're jumping in, moving back, making angles, you're gonna roll an ankle eventually, like it's gonna happen. Whereas if you have ankle support, you're not eventually if you get used to wearing shoes without ankle support, you're gonna start like taking the edge off of your movements, trying to like reduce the stress on your ankles. Whereas actually if you had the right footwear in the start, you're gonna find it much more comfortable. You're gonna have to do all the moves that you wanna do without um, risking injuries pretty much. Number four is a journal. Journals are absolutely brilliant guys, honestly. I wish I started keeping a journal sooner. I didn't, which is probably like my biggest mistake. But just creating like a daily journal, and it doesn't have to be like, dear diary, blah, blah, blah. not diary, but like a journal, so it's like short bullet points. For me, I write down what workout I did, so whether it was like a boxing workout, weights workout, or it's like a conditioning, I'll write down exactly what I did, how long I did it, and I'll put like how I felt, or if I felt bad, and so on, or like food as well, write down if you like eat poorly that day, write down your runs, your times, like it's such a good way to look back after say like three months to see how far you've progressed, make sure you are progressing as well, which is always one that people forget to look at. Also like for me, it gives me a big confidence boost as well, seeing that like when I started, I'll be like, oh yeah, I feel pretty good, I feel pretty good. And then like six months down the line, I'll look back and think, damn, that was like really bad, but I felt good. So look where I am now. If I've like doubled in any area, then like I'm gonna feel really good about myself. I feel even better than I did then. So again, Keeping a journal also keeps yourself uh, accountable for yourself, so that's another thing, keep yourself disciplined. That's it, number four is a journal. Number five is a decent pair of headphones. So honestly, I don't go anywhere without my headphones. I love music, and I feel like most people do as well. Training with a decent pair of headphones makes such a big difference to me. Like, I wouldn't do it if I was like in a boxing class or anything, obviously that's pretty rude, and then probably take, take them out anyway. But if you're training on your own, if you're in the gym, if you're running, like, 
I don't get people who are like, oh, it makes you stronger if you run with like no music or makes you work harder sort of thing. Like no competition is dead silent. Like I don't know any sports where there's like no noise whatsoever. So it really doesn't make sense to me. Like you're always usually gonna have people cheering you on or booing against you. Like there's always some sort of atmosphere. And music just fills that gap for me. Um, you can use it to motivate you, keep you happy, like anything. Um, so a decent pair of headphones is massive. You don't want to be spending like £20 every month for a new pair of cheap headphones to keep breaking. I've had the Powerbeats free for I think four years now and they, they've not missed a beat. They've always worked, always connected great. Sound quality, I'm not an audiophile or anything like that, but to me, they sound good. They get the job done and they stay in my ears as well. Massive thing. You don't want to be running around with no like sanded AirPods, like falling out your ear every five minutes, fall down a drain or something. Like, that ain't going to be great. You don't want to spend more on those. So that's number five headphones. At number six, we have a bit of an odd one, to be honest. You don't see a lot of people recommend these, but it's an air purifier. So I got one about a year ago, and honestly, I've not looked back. I have asthma, so I suffer with my breathing. And an air purifier, honestly, just helps me clear everything out. So I actually think about getting another one for like downstairs in my house and that. But honestly, so what they do is basically, it's like a little fan, I guess, on the top. And underneath is a filter, like an air filter. So when it pulls the air in from your room or wherever, it goes through the filter and pushes it back out. So if you get like uh, hay fever, allergies and things like that, it's going to help reduce those. And it's just going to help filter out the air around you. So it can also help with your sleep, things like that, your breathing. Um, didn't help me too much because I still got a cold from it, but I won't blame the air filter for that. It's probably my fault. Um, but things like this are going to be less often, less occurring. So definitely have a look at getting an air filter. You can pick one up for air purifier. Sorry, you can pick one up for like fifty pound um, some places. So I'll link the one that I've got in the description. All the things that I recommend here are linked down below anyway, so you guys can check them out for yourselves. So yeah, that's it. Number six is an air purifier. So number seven, number seven is a fitness tracker. So there's loads on the market. Uh, first thing I wouldn't recommend getting some like quirky Chinesey brand sort of one. Um, I would go with a well-known manufacturer uh, like Fit, uh, Fitbit or Garmin or someone along those lines. Personally, I use the Whoop one, which is like the most awkward name to say ever. But the Whoop strap is good for me because uh, it's waterproof. It's really discreet as well. There's no screen. I can accidentally tap stuff, especially for boxing. I have the bicep strap as well, so it means that it's just like really small, really discreet, and it's got all the information I need, which is like huge, especially when you're like taking your training seriously, you're tracking your sleep and things like that. This can do it all. It is on the more expensive side, but the information that I get from it and the value that I put on this for tracking my heart rate in my sessions, also there's your heart rate variation, you can track your sleep, uh, your different sleep uh, I forgot what they're called, but you know, you've got like REM sleep and so on. You can track all of those, how you slept, and it's just brilliant, honestly, just tracking your heart rate day to day. It's just like something that is really good just to get in the tune of, so you can understand on days when you feel like really awful, you don't want to train, you can have a look, see what happened. So maybe you only slept like three hours that night without realizing and so on, or like maybe you stayed up late. Like you can see it all, and you can like then think, all right, I won't do that again because it had this effect on me. So tracking your sleep is actually a massive one for me. And then obviously activities as well. Say you run 5k every other day, you can watch your heart rate, hopefully, slowly come down each run as your body getting fitter and you're able to deal with that sort of stress on your body or your times will get quicker. So again, you can pair up most trackers with like a run tracking app like Strava or something like that. But yeah, so that's it guys. That's my seven essentials, which I would recommend to anyone. Give them a go. If you've got any other things that you would recommend to someone that's like an essential that you should definitely try and get, then put it in the comments down below and I'll catch you guys next time.